And I'm back. And not to worry, totally sober. Well, mostly. Somewhat. It doesn't matter. Most importantly, in this stage we'll deal with small projects. In fact, two mini projects. Edging organic and non-organic models. We'll deal with level of details, the thinking process while edging, plus tips and tricks for better freestyle workflow. Let's jump into it. Meet Silky the Frog. We have a long history with this model, but that story is for another day. First off, let's examine Silky. As you can see here, all the body colors on Silky are mesh modeled. Two different materials to separate between them. The main question is, how do we edge this frog? The second question is, what kind of details do we want? To answer those, I'll introduce you to an idea so old it exists in even cave paintings. If you were to sketch this frog, you need to represent a few things. First is the general form, which is the outer and inner silhouettes. The second thing is adding, well, secondary details that are unique to this model. To answer the first, an organic model is pretty simple. The general outer form is the silhouette edge type. That already covers about 50% of what we need, but if you observe carefully, the frog's nose line is missing. To add that, we'll use our favorite edge type, and I think you've guessed it by now, yeah, that's edge mark. On the model, I have the edge marked for us. We only need to activate the edge type. Cool, but we have one problem. The line is kind of too contrasty, which makes us focus more on the lines and less on the overall form. To tone down the silhouette, we'll style it. Rename the line style. Now, first stop is the color. Let's sample a color from the render. Now tweak the color. That blends pretty well. Lines aren't quite organic yet. We need them to be thinner at the start and ending of each stroke. And to do that, we'll use the thicknesses a long stroke modifier. Mapping to curve and change the curve to an end shape. Min and max thickness is one and three. We're done with the first part. And now the secondary details. This will be another style and we'll need another line set. Here we want subtle lines between the white and yellow area. So the obvious edge type would be material boundary. Before we render, we'll just bulldoze over every setting for this line set. Next stop is color. Yes, sample the color from the render again. But this time we'll use a slightly darker color and maybe shift it towards the orange hue a little bit. A note here, try to pick a line that will blend well with the render. If you choose a line color with too high saturation, it will compete with your render. Subtle never settles with vivid, as some may say. So done with color, the next part is line thickness. The same setting as silhouette. And done. Now don't worry about the lines not being super smooth. They are organic lines. If you're worried about it, ask yourself, when was the last time you've drawn with a pencil and got absolutely perfect line thicknesses? I can assure you that nearly all artists will say the perfect line exists only in vector line art. But we're not doing vector line art, so why worry? Just let it go. That about outlines the basic workflow of the organic edging process. To sum it up, organic usually has two parts. First, the main lines, which is the lines that bring the form to shape. And ask yourself this question, if I sketch the object, what minimum lines will represent the whole object? Second is the secondary details, which can be anything you've learned this far. Now to the hard part. No, not that it's difficult, it's just more solid and firm. Well, enough with the teaser. Let's see what it is. The second example is edging these electrical panels. We'll need this camera, so let's change to it. Let's look at the final result and work backwards. Change the line set to 2.1 electrical panels done, and render. Most of the time, non-organic models are harder to edge compared to organic models. A tip in hard surface models, how you edge is fully depending on how the model is built. Now let's examine the meshes. First is the panel cover. To isolate it, let's press numpad slash, and we're in the local view. The rim of the panel is smooth shaded and flat shaded on the front facing part. This will change the shading that will help the line later on. Next, the knob. Observe that only the handle is edge marked. Moving on, the indicator. See the edge mark? Another edge type we could use here is material boundary, but since edge mark is our favorite, we'll just use that. And the door handle. Edge mark is on one edge only. Since we want crease to detect 91 degree angles and lower only, if we turn the crease angle up, it will ruin other areas. Also, we don't want to add another line set for this mini project, 
it is a mini project. This is a simple trick. If only a few crease angles are over the targeted angle, you can edge mark those ones and set the crease angle to the majority of the edges that the model really needs. The yellow, orange, and black electrical hazard sign is two parts. They are slightly offset to get their lines on each other. This makes modeling easy and we can easily edge it with the border edge type. Now let's change to our working line set and start from the beginning. So we have edge marks, let's tick that. And here in this area, the faces are turning back so there will be silhouette edges and let's tick that. And on the front panel, these are open edges plus the panel never touches the panel box so the edge type border will appear here. Finally, crease. Let's set the edge angle to 91 and all edges over 91 degrees will not be rendered. Another tip, to only see lines, turn off solid in the layers panel. If the render still communicates, then we've done a good job. We have some missing lines, but we don't have to worry about them. If we turn solid shading back on, it'll help. The real reason we do this is, well, do you remember stage 9's paint cans? You might need to check the stage blend file again. There are mistakes on the model and we deliberately put them there. The edges on the lid and the bottom are too close and hence the lines are rendered too dense and a patch of dark will be rendered. Also, we can't increase the line thickness there. It's the same on this panel mesh. We can edge it perfectly, but when the lines are too close, it looks like dark little patches appear. To solve that, we either one, use shading and add info, or two, model it differently, or three, don't edge too dense. Now for style, rename the line style to dark thin lines. Thin the lines to two and darker gray. Ta-da! Well, you saw the render a while ago too. You might ask, what if my character is organic and non-organic, like a cyborg ninja? Use both methods and model for edge rendering. Always isolate the model or part of the model with a local view and do a test render. Also, isolate lines from shading and plan ahead. But worry not, there are more mini projects ahead. We'll meet you there.